Yes, I talked to Uchika a couple hours ago to make sure you're here. She does the thing about this, but... Okay. So um, before I start, I want to make an announcement in that um, the opening ceremony's time has changed to 5.15, and it is imperative that we be there by 5 o'clock. Uh, Michael will leave the journalist, uh, journalist there because once, uh, once 5 o'clock happens, the doors close and you can't get in, okay? So, um, so there'll be no questions for the panelists, you'd have to arrange for that after, afterwards, some, uh, some other time. It's just that we're on a very, very tight, tight schedule. So I just wanted to say that so everyone knows uh, why we're all rushing, rushing out the door <laughs> at the <laughs> end there. Uh, and it's unfortunately, it's just a few steps away. Okay, so just so you know. We're just waiting for our last speaker to show up who's going to be here in just a second. <coughs> <laughs> okay, as Luchika takes her seat. So Michael, just tell me when to start. Okay, all right. So welcome everyone, I'm Paula Fujiwara. I'm the scientific director of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, and as we call it, the Union. So welcome to this opening uh, official press conference that we hope will set the tone for the coming week ahead of us. So much has happened already, but there's much more to come. <clears throat> the Union is of course the custodian of the 50th World Conference uh, on Lung Health uh, taking place this week uh, here in Hyderabad. And I must say we are delighted that the event is already making waves on global news websites. Yesterday, as you're probably aware, some very promising news on progress on a TB vaccine was announced 
at the TB Science 2019 press conference, and it's our hope that the announcement will set the tone this week for a long overdue discussion about TB prevention, as uh, vaccines are the ultimate form of prevention. And in today's press conference, we'd like to give you the opportunity to hear from some of the speakers who will address the opening ceremony just after this press conference. Um, and before introducing my esteemed guests, let me do some housekeeping that we usually do at the beginning. It's being live streamed, this press conference, <coughs> on our conference YouTube website. And <clears throat> the archive recording will be available on the conference Facebook page later. So th for those of you who are online, welcome uh, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, today we'll be hearing some brief remarks from all of our speakers, then I will open it up to your questions. Again, we have to uh, end by a uh, quarter, uh, quarter to the hour. We have microphones set up on either side uh, of the room, so you line up behind them, and uh, we will, uh, when you would like to ask a question, state your name, your media outlet, keep the questions brief, and who you would like to address the question to. So, um, as I said, once, uh, once the uh, uh, press conference is over, we all have to leave. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Teresa Caseva here from the WHO, who's head of the Global TV program. And if you have some questions, again, later, you may be able to talk with her about some of the details of, of Global TV control. So our first speaker uh, needs no introduction. Um, this is uh, Dr. Jamie Tongsing, who's the director of the Union Southeast Asia office, and I'm very proud that she is hosting um, this event uh, as, as part of the union team and the first time the union conference has been ha held in half a century. She's gonna briefly reflect on what she will say tonight at the opening ceremony. So Jamie, please go ahead. Hello everybody and welcome to India. As Paula said, I and my colleagues in, the, in India are very happy that finally we have the union conference coming to the place where a lot of the TB problem in the world lies. <coughs> As you know, India has the highest TB burden in the world, with one in four of all global cases reported in, the, in this country. And that simply means that we cannot eliminate TB globally unless we end it here in India. We are encouraged by the recent stats re released in WHO's global TB report, showing that the numbers of people with TB in India is falling, <coughs> and that is good news. But let's be honest. TB is not still not following, falling nearly half fast enough in India. Progress is still too slow to meet the targets. We need to step up the pace of treatment and prevention. And those targets in India are ambitious, as they should be. The Indian government, as you know, has made the fight against TB a central priority and boldly pledged to end TB by 2025, five years before the global targets. And we are incredibly appreciative of this commitment from the Indian government. Tonight at the opening ceremony, I will be reading a letter from Indian Prime Minister Modi sent to the Union for this conference. We have to scale up the pace of prevention if we are to get to our goal. We quite simply have to prevent wherever we treat. Here in India, the Southeast Asia office has been engaged in India's large TB detection and treatment project called Akshya. It's funded by the Global Fund. The Union's project Akshya supports India's <coughs> national TB program to expand its reach and effectiveness, targeting marginalized and vulnerable communities in 128 districts across India. We work with 200 community-based organizations and thousands of community volunteers to bring TV services to those who need it the most <coughs> free of cost. In 2018 alone, the project reached over 6.5 million people, identified and tested over 180,000 for TB, and help place more than 24,000 TB patients on treatment, thus preventing countless cases of infection and mitigating catastrophic costs. But for every Akshaya project, we need another one. And wherever we treat in the future, we need to be preventing at the same time. So it is both long overdue and timely that we will see some significant announcements on prevention trials and drugs at the conference this week in Hyderabad. We cannot eat end TB epidemic if we do not prevent where we treat. Finally, I would like to say that it is truly wonderful to see so many TB survivors at a conference. We cannot end the TB epidemic without them. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. I am very delighted to introduce our next speaker, who is Nandita Venkatesan, whose um, story of tuberculosis survival is just absolutely inspiring. I'm going to leave, leave it to her to, to speak, uh, speak about it. And she's going to be actually part of our opening ceremony tonight. Um, 
I think it was high time that the union conference, which is considered to be the biggest congregation of researchers, uh, TB survivors and advocates actually happened in a country, in a high burden country, which is why I think it is important <coughs> that the conference happened in India. Um, yes, I know there have been issues being raised, very important issues on the uh, <laughs> registration <coughs> fees and a lot of concerns have been raised around that. But uh, the fact that the conference was happening in a lot of Western countries versus a, con versus a country where, uh, where the burden is actually very high, so it has been long overdue firstly. And I'm happy to represent TB survivors globally today at the opening ceremony. Uh, there have been a lot of survivors I know have managed to make it to the t to the union conference this time. Some of them have exceptionally inspiring stories I know personally who have taken um, drug resistant TB treatment for close to six to eight years, um, like me. And I, or in my case, of course, I ended up losing my hearing completely, and I wear two sets of cochlear implants for the past five months for to make me hear better. So. As a survivor, I think that the conference gives us an opportunity to raise some very important points that we survivors have been advocating for a long time. For example, first is the scale up of drug, drug susceptibility testing, um, increase, increasing the coverage of drug susceptibility testing in India and everywhere. Uh, because diagnosis, getting the diagnosis right is a very big challenge in TB, especially drug resistant TB. Um, also, the also access to newer drugs, bedaquiline, delamanid, and and of course the newer drugs that are in the pipeline, say pritomanid. Uh, also, the, the government access to government schemes such as the Nikshay Potion Yojana, the uh, the scheme for uh, the scheme for 500 rupees that is offered to Indian patients as part as part for part of providing nutrition so a lot of survivors here who have come today hope to use this opportunity wherein a lot of policy makers are here to advocate their concerns very vocally and to let them know what the ground realities are here in india today because there is an obvious chasm that exists between what happens <coughs> in the ground and versus what gets communicated to, uh, at the top. And this is something a lot of us survivors often encounter. So I think that we want to use this platform and this opportunity to make our voices heard even stronger to know that we are not just a number and we are not just one among the 2.2 uh, million TB survivors, but we have a voice and we have a say in how our TB response should be for us because <coughs> it is our life that is at stake after all. And I acutely understand this myself today, which is what prompted me to get into advocacy in the first place, uh, because I know what it means to suffer through uh, immense amount of problems in TB treatment, whether it is access, diagnosis, or whether it is suffering years together and losing years of your life to a disease that is absolutely treatable and curable. So we want to use this platform to raise our issues and make and bring about a change and make things even stronger for the patients on the ground. Thank you, Nandita. I just want to uh, uh, have, say a personal remark about this. When I first men, met Nandita over a year and a half ago, we couldn't talk to each other because she was completely deaf from the, from the treatment. So now today you can, you, can hear, you can see and hear the fact that she's talking with us. She understands what we're saying because she was able to get mm -hmm. a cochlear implants uh, put in, so now she's, she's back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> our next speaker is uh, Claire Forlani, who's a film and t uh, TV actress. I was going to say TV actress, <laughs> but a TV I actress. <laughs> and, <laughs> and a newly appointed ambassador to the union. Um, I know Claire spent all of yesterday um, uh, speaking with survivors at the Survivor Summits and speaking with volunteer staff and TB survivors um, at the um, <clears throat> Malapit uh, Pulbag slum and has been on a steep learning curve about tuberculosis. And Claire, over to you. Well, I mean, this <coughs> conference is focusing on the survivors, which as you can see by just listening to Nadita speak, it's one of the most important voices that we've got to listen to. And everything she said, is what hopefully is also going to be repeated later and repeated again and again and again because we need to hear it mm. clearly. 
Um, I uh, have this privilege now of being uh, an ambassador for the union, which I feel very lucky to do because hearing these stories, going to the slums, meeting the people, meeting all of these incredible people and more who are fighting the fight here to try to make a change because obviously this seems sometimes like a silent epidemic. It's been neglected. Um, faces <coughs> need to be put to this. These voices are massively important. And last night I got to meet the president of the union, Dr. Jeremiah Shakaya, and the executive director of the union, Jose Luis Castro. And they, they were impressive because they are, have spent their lives and they are committed to this. And they said, you know, that obviously this is a mountain to climb. They've been do the union has been doing it for over 100 years, but they said they will not give up. And that's why we're here. No one here is going to give up. Um, the union conference is obviously, like I said before, focusing on putting a face to TB to eradicate the stigma. It's focusing on the prevention and the screening in the household members that are getting contact with TB, which is massively important, and obviously continuing the continuation of medical research and development. And we're also going to highlight at the conference our support to the Indian government who has pledged to end TB by 2025. So let's try and hold them to that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Our next speaker is uh, Ren Mingui, and he is the Assistant Director General for HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, and neglected tropical diseases at the World Health Organization. And the WHO, as you know, uh, recently released its global tuberculosis report for 2019. Ren. Good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, also my privilege to join um, with panels uh, to make some few remarks before our uh, union conference opening. Um, uh, as we talking about the Lung House, <coughs> probably I should start with tuberculosis as you hear. It's actually number one uh, uh, infection killers in the world, unfortunately, and every day, nearly 4,000 people uh, lose their li life to TB. It means that every minute, uh, about probably three people will, killed, uh, will be killed <coughs> by TB. And so we fully understand the certain important issues, and uh, we are jointly working with other partners to make sure we actually should on the track to end this TB by 2030, which is actually committed by all the state uh, leaders and the government uh, in the UN high level meeting. Um, as we hear, we uh, just uh, issued our um, global TB report two weeks ago. <coughs> we see absolutely great uh, sub significant progress from the report and the country uh, performance. Uh, about 7 million people were reported to have been reached with quality TB care in uh, 2018, um, up to uh, uh, up from uh, uh, 6.8 million in 2017, so big <coughs> in increase. And India absolutely is leading the way and one of the biggest contributors uh, to this wonderful success, uh, along with uh, you know other partners and, and support. As we hear probably from different angles, WHO working with Stop TB Partnership and also uh, Global Fund to Fight STD <coughs> Malaria uh, to implement special uh, strategic initiative called the uh, Find, Treat, and All NTTB, which actually has uh, such great uh, improvements and which is ev evidence clearly. And um, furtherly, uh, TB related deaths dropped from 1.6 <coughs> million in 2017 to 1.5 million in 2018. Um, seven uh, high TB burden countries um, and one region uh, are absolutely on the track um, to reach the 2020 milestone of NTB. The seven countries I can give you names because I actually appreciate the country's great uh, efforts. Kenya, Lesotho, Myanmar, Russia, South Africa, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. One region means WHO uh, European region. <coughs> however, however, much uh, remains to be done. Around three million people with TB reported, unfortunately don't have access to quality uh, care in 2018. 
and uh, there's um, even more accurate for uh, people with uh, drug resistant TB and with only one in three access treatments. So clearly it's big as a gap. Prevention efforts are expanding, but absolutely we need to intensify uh, uh, in this very important areas prevention. The funding gap of close to three uh, to uh, five billion US dollars impedes progress in overall TB response and for research. So um, we also find the TB uh, epidemic is influenced by other key determinants, for instance, um, tobacco use. So let's move to the second point I would like to highlight, which is also very important for uh, uh, lung health, that's um, <coughs> tobacco. Tobacco remains leading preventable cause uh, of death for lung health. The world has uh, more than one billion uh, uh, smokers and more than 350 million smokeless tobacco users. Close to one million of people who feel sick with tuberculosis every year may be contributed to the smoking. So you see the smoking absolutely has close association with TB. Mm -hmm. So controlled tobacco epidemic can absolutely transfer to, to, to the major contribution towards ending tuberculosis. This is a very important issue. That's why uh, we have to, we see might be some very important discussion in this union conference on tobacco use and tobacco free initiatives. Third point is um, chronic obstetrical polymerous diseases, we call COPD in medical terms, if you don't uh, understand. But anyway, this is also very important issues, but the major causes of COPD are smoking and air pollution. So air pollution is also very important risk factor when we talk about you know, uh, lung health. Of course, we need uh, great systems for health to respond so many threats and diseases uh, about lung health, including tuberculosis, uh, tobacco uses, and air pollution. That's why we absolutely highlight essential health services. It will be key. So great news probably here. We have such a wonderful universal health coverage high level meeting, which landed with a political declaration on universal health coverage. But unfortunately, we, if we can't translate into such wonderful, important political in, uh, declaration into real action, we'll lose all the gain we have. So that's exactly the, the theme of this uh, uh, union conference called urgency. We have to work in the urgency mode, work together to stop TB and stop tobacco use and to see, find the way to address the air pollution as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ren. And our final speaker, uh, needs no introduction. Uh, Luchika Dicciu is the Executive Director of the Stop TB Partnership. <coughs> so Luchika, please go ahead. Yeah, so thank you very much. I need to uh, speak quickly, so I hope uh, my Romanian English uh, will work well. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank uh, the Union for bringing us every year and for becoming the umbrella under which a lot of the statements and recoveries, uh, recovery, discoveries and uh, uh, you know new things coming up are, are there. So thank you very much uh, to the colleagues from the Union. My second point, I have like eight points. My second point goes to the Indian women for their graciousness and beauty. And if you look at the street for whatever income they have, from the poorest to the richest, the graciousness they are walking and the beauty of their smiles is amazing. And I'm ex especially impressed because I tried to wear this and four times I almost fell. So leave aside the sari, okay? I walk on the stairs like I'm drunk. So people are saying, remove that, it's not for you, okay? <laughs> now, I want you to write about tuberculosis. So thank you very much for coming here. And Claire, we are so grateful from the Stop TB Partnership and therefore you coming with us here. You are in this boat, you cannot leave it now. <laughs> but you here in the room, whatever you write, even if you say there was this crazy woman that came, she spoke about things that made no sense. I don't care, just write about us. Because nobody fucking writes about TB and that's why nobody has an idea that in the year 2019, it kills more than HIV and malaria together and is the biggest infectious disease killer when we know the cure for and we know how to diagnose it for 200 years. It's a crime. So that comes from the fact that nobody paid attention. It was us, few of us, for 20 years trying and trying to bring the attention. So you are the media. You have a crucial role to say. Let me tell you something dramatic. You know social media, tweets, huh? 
The biggest event of the last month was the Global Fund replenished with $14 billion, with President Macron throwing <laughs> himself like it in an auction. He really stayed in front of country delegations and pointed to each of them saying, Norway, can you give more? Saudi Arabia, can you give more? He went so far. Global Fund was replenished with more than $14 billion. Global Fund tweeted that. That was a pinned tweet with Global Fund. Do you know how many retweets they had? How many? 500. Oh 500 retweets. You have the fucking Kardashians <laughs> throwing a fart and the entire world ret retweeting for 28 million times. And we are dying here to get attention of people dying of a curable disease in the year 2019 and we get 500 tweets. Dr. DG Tedros has 28. And you know here, it will be us retweeting. I retweet Tedro, uh, Ren, uh, Teresa retweets mine, I retweet Teresa, <laughs> I retweet Paula. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. Go to any of our accounts. We say, oh my God, we announced a new vaccine. Who gives a shit? A hundred tweets, a hundred tweets. So I'm sorry I'm outraged, but this is the reality. We are here outraged, some of us, and then we go out there and something else is more important. So I don't care, you want us to be naked, we go out naked. <laughs> you want us to be outraged, we go outraged. <laughs> yes, with, 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 with her. I'll do it, I'll do yes, it. Yes, yes, see, I love that. Tweet this. So that's what I, so uh, that, that's one thing. So now, we have now even scientific reasons to be happy. One of them is that first time, first time in my life when the Global TB report came out and my life is long and I will fucking retire before this disease will be even close to be eliminated. Ren is upset because he will appear in photos near me and you will put <laughs> fuck there. But doesn't matter. You will write about us. Doesn't matter, Ren. We speak with the no. <laughs> The reason is that He's this. The Global <laughs> TB report this year. Three minutes more. Yeah. Three minutes more. The Global TB report shows that this year versus any other <coughs> year in history. We discover 600, we discover, we diagnosed and treated 600,000 people with TB more. Every year we were doing 100,000 more, okay? Slow but steady, bad. We this year jumped with 600,000. So it's a big reason of hope for us in the TB community. For you might be like, I don't get that. For us, it's a huge increase in finding <laughs> those that are missing with TB. In addition to this, you heard vaccine news. Early in the week, under the uh, auspices of Before the Union, from Stop TB, we announced first time ever in just two months, this regimen for complicated MDRTB called BPAL, it went from being FDA approved in just two months to be on the Stop TB's catalog, available for 150 countries at $1,000. That's unheard of. The price is high, and that's why communities and civil society are now manifesting at the meeting of the TB Alliance. Very good, right over that, that we can decrease the price. But there is good news for us because we have a pipeline, we have things coming up, with, we have with what to fight TB. So we have all these reasons to, to uh, be uh, optimistic about TB, and I hope, and the, as Paula said, there will be more things coming up in the coming days in terms of research, but also in terms of the products. We have the UN high-level meeting targets, and what we did in the Stop TV partnership together with WHO and with the Global Fund, we unpacked these targets per country. Because of course, as uh, Jamie, you said, if India doesn't move, the world doesn't move. But it doesn't mean that the global targets are not made from the share of every single country. So Tuvalu has their share of two patients contributing to that, and they have to reach because those are two lives that are important. So we unpacked these targets per countries, and we are gonna go all together to these heads of states to say, you have to deliver your 100 people. You are not India, but you have to deliver at your 100 people. So we have all these reasons to really push finally the TB movement. We cannot be said, oh, these are the wimpy kids, very pathetic, they have no tools, they don't. We have the reasons and we have hope. We need your support to bring this in the light. And if your support is controversial, I don't give a shit, write the controversy, <laughs> write about people that lose their life, write about us being silent, but just write about us. Tomorrow evening, Claire is here and is amazing because Claire is Claire. 
We try to bring celebrities from countries as well, because in a way, a celebrity from Tajikistan will speak to the Tajik government more than Claire. Sorry about that, <laughs> Claire. Uh, so we have an, uh, we announce under the union the Cochon Prize next uh, tonight at the, the opening conference, but as well tomorrow evening. And tomorrow evening we invite you, the journalists, to come because we brought specially some Bangladesh famous actress, a Tajik singer. Uh, a blogger, for, uh, a vlogger from here. I don't know exactly what she blog or vlog about, but that's fine. I don't care as far as she will blog or vlog about it. So you all come because we will have as well some Bollywood dancing, and it will not be made dancing, but the top will be there. I will wear a sari, and underneath, I don't know what, but you might have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, thank you so much, Lushika, my dear friend. Uh, so we, um, we, we have the microphones here, and we have uh, 15, 15 minutes. And please come, as I say, please come to the mic and state your name, your media outlet, and uh, what you, who would like to address, address the question to. As I've said before, I do not believe that journalists who write about this, you don't say, okay, here we have, here we have my friend here. Yes. Hi. Okay. <coughs> Is this working? <laughs> <coughs> Hello? Yeah. Oh, uh, Amy Green, uh, writing for Health E! News and Spotlight. Um, I think this is directed to Paula, but basically, can you comment on prevention efforts in South Africa? Uh, are they being scaled up? Is it a priority from the SA government? I know we prioritize treatment and access to new beds like bedaquiline and delaminate, but what are we doing in prevention? Are you asking me? Uh, well, anybody, anybody who knows about yeah. what's happening in South Africa in prevention. I, I want to just say something about prevention in South Africa. I think that you are so lucky that uh, Minister Mozzoletti was really in, in uh, there. I was there when he made this announcement. We are going to deal with prevention. And he was the, one of the first, if not the first, to say this is important. So I think South Africa is actually ahead of the game and has been. Luchika. Yeah, so actually South Africa will do two things. I can be also serious. So two things. Uh, South Africa is really pushing the preventive therapy in people living with HIV, <coughs> but as well, uh, and uh, will come uh, as well with some data on the use of preventive therapy and the implications if uh, if uh, 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 one cure is enough or if we have to do a repeated uh, treatment and so on. So there are studies coming out from South Africa. But also South Africa, which is procuring, by the way, a lot of these products with their own domestic budget, which is really spectacular, has a big buying power, you know, because again, it's not a small country. They have big numbers. And buying with domestic, they are able to be at the table to negotiate the pricing of some of the new products coming out. And soon, I, I am pretty sure you will hear about uh, the, the how uh, big the effort of South Africa together with the multilaterals globally are in bringing the prices of some of the preventive therapy down. So uh, South Africa is actually, uh, I have to say, uh, really running ahead. Uh, and I'm happy to say that also India is coming. And I would like to see, or we would like to see the same in other countries as well. Thank you. Yes, Anu. Hi, uh, I'm Anu. I'm at The Wire in Delhi. Uh, serious question, but have you tried to reach Kim Kardashian? Has she been interested in being a celebrity endo endorsement for TV or anything else important? No, uh, we uh, don't get that far. We tried to reach a uh, few people. Uh, one of them was uh, what's uh, Ringo Starr when the union uh, had, uh, we had a union meeting in Liverpool. Ringo Starr had tuberculosis. He was in Liverpool. So everybody, including I think the union, but at least we wrote, trying to say, can you come at the opening of the union? He said, nope, but I can give you th th what was 10,000 pounds or something to contribute. Go fuck yourself with your 10,000 pounds. No. So, but that was more or less our answer. Uh, we tried to reach, um, oh my goodness, the one that uh, played in Les Miserables and she lost a lot of weight, and Hathaway. Okay. Uh, because she played uh, in the Les Miserables and uh, she lost weight and we thought she will relate to this because it's not easy to lose weight and I don't know why I speak about that, but Claire can probably <laughs> explain as an actress how complicated it is. Uh, we got another no. When I refer to Kim Kardashian or so, I refer to the fact that these people, you know, they, 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 they flip the hair, and I'm sorry, Claire, to bring that here. It might sound insensitive, but it's pain, huh? They well, flip I, the hair. I think, I, think, I think the goal is not the Kardashians. Yes. The goal is you have 
cricketers in this country whose families have been affected by TV, people that you, athletes that you, you know, respect, admire, who impact your society. So what we really want to do is actually go, <coughs> is put a face like we have here, put a face like we did in America with AIDS. We got Magic Johnson. When Magic yes. Johnson stepped out and said, I'm HIV, that changed the face mm. of HIV. So we do, we've been talking a lot yes. about it in the last few days about putting a face mm. with your cricketers, with your Bollywood stars, with your politicians, public faces saying, I or my family are a survivor. And to take, to, because there's too much fear Yes. There's too much fear around this disease, and we need to get the stigma away. Okay. So uh, we I don't need the, the Kardashians. We need a cricketer. Uh, yes. Okay, great headline for a lot of stories. But let me just ask my other question, which is, uh, what are the strategies now for this $1,000 per course with the new drug? What are the strategies available? I mean, apart from people like MSF who will make a lot of noise, and you know, uh, you're saying that it's too expensive as well, although you put it on the catalog, what are the strategies available to bring the price down? So th the first strategy is that that drug will be used only after WHO will issue the recommendation. Mm -hmm. And that we expect to happen in the next two months. But of course, they have to look at the data and issue the recommendation. And it's a drug, as it is recommended right now, for the cases that I would call it desperate, very mm. complicated cases, is not for all of them. So uh, the <coughs> strategies are, first, we, we want to see the full recommendation of WHO. We will push it out there because we need more data to see how it works. Mm. And co ideally, because it's for the very complicated cases of drug-resistant TB, you would say then they can be used for normal cases, right? If it works in very bad ones or very complicated ones, it should work in simpler ones, but we don't know that. So the real market and the real push will be the moment we have enough data that WHO can look at it and say it works in any <coughs> other places, so let's scale it up. In the meantime, we as Stop TV Partnership encourage the civil society and we work with them to really push and try and see if we can reduce even this price even further. The market now is very small indeed. We speak of 50,000 people globally that have these very complicated cases, 50 to 60. Thousand, something like that. So it's not a huge uh, market. So for the time being, we are constructing to say so. Okay. Um, uh, just, we have just, time just for one more, one more uh, question. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, mine goes, my yeah. name sorry. Is sorry. I know there are people lined up, but we have time for one more question because we have to get to okay. that opening ceremony. So you were yeah. in line. Yes. Yeah, my name is Hope Mafaranga. I come from Uganda. And my question goes to Reni. You talked about tobacco and smoking. I just wanted to find out what are you doing? Uh, in the fight of the TB vis-a-vis <coughs> -vis the, the companies that are selling tobacco and the governments that are interested in getting the, the taxes, the money from these companies. Because I mean, I know they pay a lot of taxes and they don't really look at, uh, you know, at the human being, but they look at the income, the, the revenue that is coming from tobacco. So I just wanted to know what are you guys doing at WHO <coughs> to ensure that uh, you put a regulation to stop these companies or the governments from putting a lot of tax <coughs> onto this. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for your question. Absolutely, uh, we take very serious about technical use, especially uh, you know, in WHO we have a, a, a FC, a FCTC, uh, uh, which is a framework for the technical control framework. I think the majority of member states are actually member of this convention. And we absolutely encourage every government to have their regulation to for the, every uh, any companies of typical uh, producer and, and the users. We have a very comprehensive package in terms of policy. We call the six uh, uh, we call the empower strategy from WHO. And in terms of uh, monitoring, evaluation, regulation, taxation, we absolutely like to see the government take ownership about the people's health in the in the center, not the commercial interest. And we also encourage the government to have taxation on tobacco products for health, not for the other sort of interests. Of course, we have looked at every country, and we have a clear monitoring uh, scorecard to see which country is much better performed in these very important Who's areas. Who's the worst? Who's the worst? <laughs> mm. <laughs> we can talk okay. later. <laughs> okay, one last, one last question, and then okay. we really must stop. Yeah, my okay. name is Liang Jun with Taishi Media from China. I'll make it quick. Uh, I want to. I have a question for Mr. Yuan. Uh, do you think the goal set by WHO that uh, by the end of 2035 uh, to end the TB, the goal can be achieved? I want to know where does uh, WHO stand? 
And also, the sec second question is: no, Do you think? No, there's one question. You have one question. Okay. Do you think the, one question. The, the governments are doing enough, especially the BRIC country? With okay. India has already made this move. What about what about other countries? Okay. Um, uh, just to be clear, uh, our target, not our targets, the UN targets, 20, is twenty. Mm -hmm. We have the NTB uh, as public health issues by twenty thirty, not by twenty twenty three. And uh, clearly about the British country, which unfortunately the, at the at, at first category we call a high DB per country, including China, India, Russia, South Africa, and uh, of course, uh, and uh, uh, Brazil, of course, is a five major country. They are actually in the high DB per country category in WHO uh, mm -hmm. estimation. Um, India, absolutely one uh, of the pioneer country, have a lot of advance in terms of policy and strategy and actions, and uh, more ambitious targets set by India to, re to reach a target by 2025. That's the target set by the Indian government. I hope the <coughs> other countries, especially British country, to follow the good example set by India. Um, many countries should do more. Clearly, as I said, uh, uh, you know, other four countries, I know Greece, uh, really set up, and already I see the BRIC countries set up their network on the TB research, and which great support from WHO secretaries. We want to see BRIC countries should lead this very important campaign <coughs> to end TB by 2030 together. Thank you very much. Okay, this is all the, the time we have for this com conference. Thank you very much for your participation. And I think, Michael, were you going to lead the journalists to the... Uh, yes. uh, we are walk down together so you make sure you get in the doors. Thank you very much. To the opening. To the opening. <laughs> I want to have a photo with you. I want to have because no, she always my, my entire family is so excited. <laughs> my son loves you. The no family is working on TV. She always comes. That's why. And I said, <laughs> and my son, who is 18, he really loves you. And he said, I don't believe you that she takes care of TV. I said, yes, the union is she's the champion. No, so he wrote me a, a yeah, message. He said, I know what you will say because usually the celebrities come and go in general. Not that I met any. So Even my yeah. we so, have a so yeah, yeah, celebrity. So, but that, but so the my, my son was Never like, one I know okay. what you will say now, that she came and left and you didn't have things. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. Take photo with your photo. Yeah. Take photo with your photo. Yeah. Can we, I, have, I want to have a photo just like that with no.